ஹலோ ஹலோ கேன் யூ ஹியர் மீ தெர் வாஸ் சம் டெக்னிக்கல் ப்ராப்ளம் ஸோ ஹலோ கைஸ் கேன் யூ ஹியர் மீ மோனிகா சிங் ஐ கேன் ஹியர் யூ ஓகே பெர்ஃபெக்ட் ஆ ஹலோ yeah can you hear me right yeah i'll do a screen share yeah i can hear you Mo- Mo- monica sinduri i can hear you yeah so i'll do a screen share and let me know once when i when you guys can see the screen okay okay you go nana is going right go yeah i'm going to go are you able to see my screen now Yeah, yeah. Yes. Okay. Nice. Okay. I can see there is one more new person can you introduce yourself uh... ma'am is it ma'am mam can you hear me okay all right so let's do a recap of uh, yesterday what i have uh, been explaining you guys so yesterday we have uh, gone through what is actually a software and what are the types of software computer softwares so we have we had operating system antivirus software and application software like business software websites and etc etc and then later on we moved on to what is testing what is verification and validation and what is software testing and then later on we went on to see if we do not test any software or any website so how does it cost companies huge amount of money and we have gone through the benefits of software testing who will do the software testing what is software quality mistakes error bugs and failures and we have gone through what is a service based company what is product based company what is product versus project and then we have gone through the career planning like start with manual testing and slowly progress with automation testing mobile testing desk automation application testing api testing performance testing and so on and so forth and then we have gone through what is software development life cycle so why it is needed in companies okay so further today i will explain you more about the various phases of software development life cycle and then later on we will move to what is waterfall model and v model and agile model if time permits so let's take an example uh,
Okay, so this is the first phase. This is a first phase in software development life cycle. Okay, in SDLC, this is the first phase. Okay. So let's imagine, let's imagine there is a company, there is a, a, there is a big company, which is some XYZ company. And they manufacture or they produce laptops and other computer related products. So let's take an example. So there is an XYZ company, they produce laptops, they, they manufacture laptops, they are into other computer related products like monitors, like adapters, charges okay so now they want to build a website okay so they want to build a website because they want to be present in the online market as well so they want to show their presence in online so they want to build a website so x xyz dot com Okay, so website presence for online selling products online. Yeah, so there is an XYZ company manufactures laptops, computer related products, and they want to uh, be so they, they, they don't have at this point of time, XYZ company doesn't have a website. So now they want to have a website so that they can sell products website on the website and increase their sales. So what they do is they go to a company or an organization abc company which creates or which can create websites for companies like xyz.com so what they do is the xyz.com people will approach ABC company. So from ABC company, a BA, which is a business analyst, okay? So a BA a business analyst will go to this company physically he will go to the company and he will see how the manufacturing is happening and then from here what he will do is he will gather the requirements if you see here he will gather the requirements he will analyze he will analyze everything and he will gather the he will gather the requirements okay so the document which he will create, the business analyst, the document which he creates is called BRS document. So what is a full form of BRS is? Business requirements specifications document. So in this document, so you need to remember this term, BRS document. So in this, in this business requirement specification document, the BA, BA, the BA will gather all the information, the, all the information which is required. So for example, let's take an e-commerce website. 
So it will gather all the information, what, what needs to be sold on the website. So what are the products which can go onto the website? And uh, you will also write like, so the checkout bo box has to be here. The cart box has to be here and the footer has to be here and the header has to be here. The currency button has to be here, pounds and only three currencies has to be displayed, which is euros, pounds and dollars. And uh, other, other products, when you hover on the desktop, it has to show PC and Mac. When you hover on laptops, it has to show Mac and Windows, so on and so forth, okay? So he will gather all the information and he will write down all the information in business requirement specification document. Okay. And also from ABC company, there is one more person who is product owner, who is responsible for overall running of the project. product owner. So we call him as PO. So PO and BA will work together in line. So later stages, you'll understand what is the responsibility of product owner. But as of now, I'll let you know, the product owner will be in communication with XYZ company, which wants a, which, which wants a website okay to be built so the product owner will be in regular touch with the xyz company and he will be asking the priorities so which which functionality has to go in first which functionality so based on priorities the product owner will be working with the stakeholders and also with the company management okay so the role of ba analyst is to gather all the requirements and the product owner is running the project overall project successfully okay So any questions, any questions on requirement phase, please. Anybody, Monica, Sinduri, Aniruddha, Chandra, ma'am, any questions? You can, you can type in the chat saying that if no questions, we can move on to the next, next bit. Okay. So in the SDLC, so the first phase is the requirements gathering phase. So I will move on to the next phase now, which is the design phase. Okay. So we have understood what is requirements gathering phase and analysis phase. I mean, we'll move on to the next phase, which is design phase. Okay. So this is the SDLC design phase. Okay, so in design phase, we have LLD and HLD. So I'll tell you what is LLD and HLD. So LLD, which is low level 
design. Okay. So first I'll go through what is low level design. Low level designs are the low level design are the I'll show you in the website. So the designer, the designer from ABC company, he will design this using wireframes and designing tools. So all, so for example, the desktop button has to come here. The laptops button has to come here and the product uh, display and the products should come here as features. And we got these promotions like, and the associated companies should come here. So all these, are done by the dev design developer. I'll show you what e-commerce wireframes, okay? So how the wireframes are. So this is an example of a wireframe. So this will be designed by the, this will be designed by the design developer, okay? So this is how the wireframes are. So how the website should look on a mobile phone? How should the mobile, how should it look an, on, on an Android phone, iPhone? How should the website should look on a website? For example, on a desktop, on a desktop, how should it look like? So these are all the low level designs which will be done by the design developer. So these are all the low level designs, okay? So the next one is high level design, which is called HLD. So what is high level design? High level designs are the architectural flow or the architectural diagrams. So I'll show you one more example of architecture diagrams. So this is, this is the architecture diagram, okay? So these are all the high level design documents. Okay, mainly these high level diagrams, which are HLDs are done by the development team or the technical team who are responsible for this. Or the, in an organization, an architect is responsible to draw the HLDs, which is high level documents. Okay. Yeah. So any, any questions on uh, design phase? Yes. Um, yeah. For the low level, uh, after the low level design, uh, architect will uh, design a high level design or we can parallelly, use parallelly parallel like hld like the high level design uh, like the architect will be doing it parallelly because he will be in, in in he will be in touch with the product owner and business analyst and he will understand the systems yeah and also parallelly the low uh, low level design the design design developers will be doing that work yeah um for the high level design uh, developers and the technical team will yeah. take care of that right exactly and low level design who can like uh, design design developers okay or ux ux developers or design developers okay that's okay. It. yeah so the next phase is after this phase we have got the next phase which is implementation or coding. So this phase is 
implementation phase one of the phase of sdlc okay so in this phase in this phase in this phase writing of code will happen writing of code or development or the development process coding development will happen in this phase okay so in order to do the right writing of code or development the developer will be dependent on brs document SRS document. I'll tell you what is SRS document. And design documents, which is both high level and low level, LLD and HLD. Okay. So in this implementation phase, what is SRS? So SRS is nothing but software requirement specification document. Okay, so software specification document. Again, this document is developed by the development team. Okay, so what is software? what is in there in software requirement document so in this document the development team and the technical team will analyze what are the tools required to develop the software or the website what are the tools which is required so some companies might use c sharp and dot net framework to implement their websites some companies might use web web technologies so what are the web, web technologies which they wanted to use? So all these, all these technical stuff. And also, what are the challenges the technical teams will face? So all these things, all these things are explained and written in software re requirement specification document. Okay. So any questions? Any questions on this phase, please? Implementation and coding phase. What is BRS? BRS is business requirement document. So BRS is business requirement document. Business requirement document is in the first phase, which is... Okay. In the first phase, which is requirement gathering and analysis. So business analyst is responsible to write the BRS document, which is business requirement specification document. So what happens, he will, he will gather all the information, what functionalities have to go in and what functionalities have to uh, be like de-scoped or uh, what functionalities. And uh, he will be in communication with the uh, ABC uh, company. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Any other questions, anybody? Okay, so we will move on to the next phase. Which is testing phase. Okay. So this phase, so testing phase, so what happens in testing phase? So in testing phase, the software tester who is involved in the 
project, who is responsible for the project to be tested, they have to go through the BRS document. SRS document, LLD, low level design document, HLD, document. So the tester has to go through all these three do documents and based on these documents, the tester will write his test cases. So first he will write his test plan, test scenarios, test cases. If there is any collection of test data, test data. So I'll give you one example of test data. So for example, so test data in an, you can write test data in an Excel sheet. So with one customer, he wants to register. So he will click on register. So test data is nothing but first name, last name, email address, phone number, password. So he will create this kind of test data in an Excel sheet so that he can use it when the website is ready for testing in the test environment okay so you can create uh, 10 users 20 users 30 users to test various test cases yeah so in this phase as we know that the first phase, which is, as we know that the first phase requirement gathering and analysis is finished, the design phase is finished, the implementation of code is finished and testing. So we are in the testing phase. In the testing phase, we have a test environment, okay? Test environment. Test environment. So the main important things as a software tester, if suppose in an organization, what they do is they will give you the BRS, SRS and LLD and HLD document. So sometimes they say that it is in a shared drive or it is in a drive or sometimes the people who are involved in the project like business analysts will email you the BRS document, the SRS and LLD and HLD. For example, in this scenario, if there is no requirements document, in some, in, in, in some situations, you might face the situations, there might not be a, a, a BRS document. They will give you the URL, which is this URL the website you are. So they will give you straight away this particular URL to understand. Okay, so to understand and write your test cases, they might completely give you the URL document. I mean, URL straight away the website. So based on that, you need to write your your test cases, login test case, my account test case, new customer test case. So you need to write all the test cases. Okay. And also it is, it is software testers responsibility. If in case the documents are, have not been given, it is your responsibility to send an email to the business analyst or the product owner to get the documents, to get the relevant documents, which is BRS, SRS, and HHL, LLD and HLD. So it is also your responsibility to go to go through the architectural diagram to understand which systems 
which systems the website is talking to architecture diagram okay so it is it is it is very important to understand the architecture diagram in this diagram you'll understand the flow the data flow okay so any questions any questions on the testing phase please No. Okay. So also in testing phase, always you will get the developed software or developed a website which you are testing. So the development will be done. Okay. So that particular website will be given to you in the test environment. Okay. No questions. I'll move on to the next phase. Which is deployment phase. So what what is deployment? Yeah, yeah, got it. One question um, for the unit test and integration test. Who will take care of our developer or the testing team? Unit test will be taken care by the developer. Okay. Okay. I mean, uh, in we 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 will come to the unit testing. So I'll tell you how the units are being split, and uh, I will explain you all those things in unit testing. It is one of the testing type, right? So I'll explain you. So unit testing is responsibility of developer. And another testing which you were talking about? Integration. Integration will also be done by developer. OK. So um, what can do for our testing team? Like uh, what are the uh, is input data and output data is matching or not that they are going to check? Input data and output data? Like uh, we are giving uh, some. 20 to 10 customers for uh, we are yeah. registering with the names so yeah. that we are going to check in the data that saved in the background like that is matching or not yeah yeah so i think you did not uh you are, you are attending the class today itself right chandra is it yeah okay I okay you done. yeah so you missed the first session okay anyways no worries i'll explain you uh so for example your question is if you put this data here yeah yeah so this is called system testing okay okay so what happens is when you put the data here and when you click on continue what okay. happens in the database a record will be created in register register account table yes okay in that table you will see all these details and as a tester it is your responsibility to check whether you are able to enter the uh, data here okay you're able okay. to enter the data here email address a valid email address so you need to also check the validations here okay, okay. so for example one valid validation is for example if you see i can enter how many numbers i can if you see this yeah yes so some so some websites will have validation and some websites won't have validation so validation is it will allow only 10, 10, 10 numbers to be entered. Yes. So here there is no validation. Okay. Okay. And the password and the confirm password. And then when you click on continue, what happens is this data, this registration data will be, will be saved in the database okay. in register account table. Okay. Oh, so yeah. as a tester, this is front end, right? This is front yes. end. And the database is back in so you should go as a tester you should go into the sql database and then you should check that the first name the last name which you entered is getting registered into the database yeah yeah hope that makes sense yes yeah any other questions guys any other deepthi monica sinduri anirudha before going to the implementation phase you can type in the chat saying no or something like that, okay?
So we will go to the next phase, which is. Uh, Chat is disabled, sir. Chat is disabled. Okay. I will enable. Is it okay now? Can you please check anybody if the chart is okay or still any issues? Still in disable. Now, I just changed the permission. Yeah, now it is good. Can you chat? Yeah. Can you guys can chat now, right? Yes, sir. Yeah, okay, perfect, yeah. So we will move on to the next phase, uh, which is deployment phase, okay? So what is deployment? I'll explain, okay? This is a very important phase. Okay, so deployment phase. So in deployment phase, the all the phases has to be completed, which is requirements gathering before moving to deployment phase. All the phases have to be completed. The requirements phase has to be completed. The design phase has to be completed. The coding has to be completed. Coding unit test has to be completed. Testing wise, all the related testings like functional testing, regression testing if we find if we find any bugs the retesting of the bugs regression testing should be completed the whole complete end-to-end -end testing has to be completed then only we can move to the deployment environment so when on then only we can deploy the software into live okay so now i will explain you so if let's let's say that we have completed the testing Okay, so let's say that we have completed testing on the test environment. Okay. Okay. This is dev environment. This is test environment. This is UAT environment. And this is live or production environment okay so in dev environment the developers will write the code if we raise any bugs so those will be fixed in the dev environment and then again they will be deployed onto test environment so in test environment as testers we will test all the test cases, test scenarios. If the login button is working fine, when we try to buy a product on the website, we are able to navigate through the pages. And when we go onto the checkout page, we are able to buy the product. The payment is done successfully. So payment testing will be done. So for example, the payment testing is when you enter your card details and when you click on submit, is it sending the OTP? And then as soon as when you get the OTP, when you confirm the OTP on the website, are you able to buy the product? And once when you buy the product, are you getting a confirmation email? Are you getting the delivery email? So to which place the product has to be delivered. So all these things, everything, all these things have to be tested in the test environment. So what is UAT? So you can ask me, what is UAT? So as a tester, you will test and all. So as a tester, you will confirm that everything is working fine. When the code is deployed onto UAT, it is an opportunity 
for other people in the organization or anybody anybody who wants to know how the website works who want to test it it is an opportunity for them it is called user acceptance testing so it is an opportunity for them to test and it is also an opportunity for these people to confirm and the test team to confirm that whatever has been tested can go into live so what happens is if defects are found in uat again it will go through the same process it will go to the dev it will go to the dev the dev will fix it it will again from dev to test the test has in the in the test environment so in the test environment you have to test the uat defects and then from there the the, the code will be deployed onto uat again retesting will be done on uat okay so this is a cycle okay so once once when we are confirmed that everything is working fine so what happens is from uat the code will be deployed onto live or production environment so in some companies in some companies there are separate teams there are separate teams which will do the deployment process they are called release management okay so there are release teams which will deploy the code from the uat to live environment okay and also to do some deployments there are deployment tools there are some deployment tools in the market so the release management will use those tools to deploy the code onto the live environment okay so also once when it is when when the deployment is done as a tester as a tester it is your responsibility to quickly do a sanity testing remember this term okay sanity testing we call it as sanity testing sanity testing so what is sanity testing what what really you want to do in the sanity testing sanity testing is testing the main main test cases or the very important navigation steps or for example i'll give you an example so this is a very important step with this this is a very important test case registration if the user is not able to register himself he won't be able to buy the product so important important functionalities have to be tested the payment the payment has to be tested login functionality has to be tested so for example if i go here there are no products so if i am trying to buy this so if you see you need to check that the price is correctly displayed and everything okay and then quantity let's put it as four add to cart so all these functionalities so when i put four quantity and try to add it is saying can you enter the mandatory fields so if you see this asterisk symbol here these are all mandatory fields so you need to click them so again if i leave it empty it won't allow me to add into cart so it will say that please enter something in the text so i'll put as that put as text and then enter it says upload a file it is a mandatory field okay so these are all has to be tested so on the live environment when when on the live environment so because what happens is in test environment and in uat so when you are when 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 you are testing you will get some knowledge what what needs to be tested and what 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 cannot be tested like you will know okay this will work perfectly so based on your experience you can do sanity testing okay and also sanity testing is not done by one person sanity testing will be done by the testing team someone will perform some testing on uh, payments some person will will be doing some test payment uh, on the live environment and then end of the day what happens is you are so confident that the live environment is working fine and the deployment of the code has been done successfully okay any questions please any questions on deployment phase uh, can we test on uh, in uh, live environment 
Yeah. So in the live environment, we can't test as, as testers. We can only do sanity testing. So sanity testing is nothing that nothing but sometimes what happens is the development in, in your team, your, your manager might ask, can you please do some sanity testing on the live environment? The reason is to get more confidence on the system that whatever has been deployed onto live system is working fine. This is kind of a testing where we are trying to confirm that everything is working fine on the live environment. But in live environment, you can't do testing uh, like as you do it in test environment, like creating a lot of uh, users on the live account. So that won't happen. So probably you might do only one test, one test. And also uh, probably you might put the tester name as test uh, hyphen live. So what happens is, what happens is we know that it's a live test, but you can't do the way you do testing on your test environment by creating 30 users, 40 users. This is only to confirm, to get more confidence on the uh, website that it's working fine. So sanity testing is done on the live environment. Yeah, are you clear? Yes. Yeah, any other questions? Before moving on to the maintenance phase, anybody, Chandra, Sinduri, Aniruddha? Okay, if no questions, we will move on to the next phase. So the next phase is the maintenance phase. So what is maintenance phase? I'll go through the maintenance phase. Anything anything when you buy, for example, when you buy a car, a brand new car. So what happens? You need to maintain the car. You need to frequently check what is happening. Okay. So here in software, maintenance phase. So there, there might be some reasons. So after in live, so what happens is sometimes as a technology keeps on changing, I'll give you one small example, okay? So if you see in this website, there might be new changes since the technology is changing. Someone, the, the owner of this organization and the management of this organization may say that, uh, are, we, are we up to date with the website? So when they say, are we up to date with the website? They might say, we want a chat boat. So a chat boat is nothing but when you, I'll show you one example of a chat boat website. So if you see here, this is a chart board. So this is a chart board here, okay? They might say, we want this chart board to be implemented on this website, on this website. So what is chart board? It is an automatic, automatic messaging. It is an automatic messaging thing where what happens is when you click on it, it will ask you, like, what is it you're looking for? So you might say, I'm looking for a product. I'm, I'm looking for an adapter. So it will guide you through the process. Okay. So these implementations, these new implementations and uh, maintenance. So maintenance. So these new implementations, new change requests. Okay. New change requests. We call them as change requests. Okay. And sometimes what happens is, they might say that can you remove can you remove these products can you remove these products or can you remove uh, some of the printers because they are not currently doing any printers 
Okay, so and maintenance, maintenance wise, so some functionalities can be removed. So they might say that those functionalities have to be like a switch off or switch off on off button. So as a developer, what he will do is he will create some kind of functionality where if you click on a button, on, an, on a button, the functionalities will get disabled. So they might ask, can you disable certain buttons? So these are all, these are all comes under maintenance. Okay. And uh, they might say, can you check the load? Then can you, can you check the load on the live environment? So how many, and they might say that, can you, can you get some analysis? Like how many, how many people are using this website? So they want to know every hour. Okay. There are 40 people using this website every hour. So that all comes under maintenance and support. Okay. And for example, if there is an issue on the live, the maintenance and support team will raise a ticket. So in, 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 in live, if there are any bugs, they call them as tickets. Issues are called as tickets. So issues, you need to raise them as tickets and those tickets will be forwarded to the developer. And those tickets sometimes will come to the tester and they will say, can you assign the severity and priority of the tickets? So what happens is those tickets when, are, when assigned to, to a developer, you need to retest on the live environment itself, you need to retest. The reason why you do the retest on live environment is you want to see whether the bug is real or not. Is it happening in your system or not? So you'll replicate those steps and then you'll put the severity and priority. So what happens is when I click on this My Accounts button, if the page goes to a blank page, it is a very severe issue it is a showstopper okay when i click on for example when i click on login button it is landing on a blank page so it is an issue because many people will log into this website and they want to register themselves as new customers when when it when, when it lands on a blank page it's a very severe issue okay these issues will be fixed as high priority okay so if the developer is working on a different project, he will put that on hold and he will jump on to fix these issues because this is a showstopper. It is happening in live environment. Okay. So sometimes these issues as based on your experience, you will see these kind of issues in live environment. The reason is sometimes the links are broken. Okay. Any any questions? Any questions on maintenance, please? Um, I have one question. Yes. Like, um, before the uh, like, how can I say? Um, yeah. Before the uh, merging into uh, all the core into the prod uh, live mm -hmm. environment, we are testing mm -hmm. right. Yeah. How can they um, broke or failed? Is there any uh, particular chances that these are failing? It's a very rare issue. It's a very rare issue. Okay. Oh. So first of all, if it breaks in the live environment, again, questions might be raised to the team who are all involved in testing the project. Okay. Okay. So sometimes what happens is, developer might be doing something on the live environment. He might get some requirement from some, some team saying that, uh, can you do it on, on the live environment? Can you fix the card issue on the live environment? So he might be doing something in the live environment. And suddenly, if, 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 a, if a link between the forgotten password and the registration is broken, sometimes it might happen, but it is very rare. It is very rare. Okay. okay. Yeah. yeah. Any other questions? Uh, in maintenance, uh, we do, uh, the developer will do the code again, right? The, they will go to again the cycle, right? So, They'll go to where? Sorry. Cycle uh, means yes, yes. Uh, Correct. design and testing. Correct. 
Correct. So what happens is, so what happens is, this is dev test UAT and live. So if there is an issue here, so, so let's say a ticket is raised. So that ticket will first go to the developer, okay? And the developer will fix that and deploy the fixed code onto test environment. And as a tester, tester as, will raise the ticket. Here, the maintenance or support team will raise the ticket. Okay. So organizations will have maintenance and support teams. So they will raise the ticket. Okay, I'll explain you this again. So what happens is sometimes they raise a, a ticket or issue. They straight away send it to the developer. Okay. To fix it. In this process, what happens is the developer will fix it. And here, you're not testing your test cases. You're testing the ticket issue. So what happens is the developer will send you the ticket number. Yeah, the ticket number, the issue number. So you will open that ticket number or issue number, and you'll go through all the steps. And based on those steps, you will test it. Okay? And you'll do the retesting and you'll do the regression testing and you'll do that uh, and you'll confirm that, yeah, the raised issue is working fine. And also the other functionalities are also working fine. And then it is moved on to UAT. On UAT, there might be some project managers or some BAs. They might also randomly check or test the issue. And then from here, again, it is moved on to the live environment. So it will go through these cycles. And other thing is, Sometimes the support team will raise the issue, yeah, and then send the ticket to the developer straight away and ask them to, can you please check that this issue is happening in live? So what you do as a tester, you're not, test, you're not executing your test cases here. You're actually working on that issue, ticket issue, okay? So what happens is, you will go into the, so what happens is the team, the maintenance team will put the link or the environment in which the issue is happening. So for example, if, if it is happening in the live environment, they will put the live URL link. So, and they'll explain you what is happening. So what you do is you will reconfirm that it is an issue. So you will test it again on the live environment and confirm that, okay, that's an issue. And you will forward that issue back to the developer and the developer will fix it. And again, it will go through the cycle, test, UAT, and live. Yeah, sometimes. So these are the two scenarios which I'm trying to explain. Okay. Any questions? Yes. Hope that is clear. Yes, yes. Yes, okay. So now, I've explained you about all the various phases, okay? All the various phases of software development lifecycle. So now we will move on to the next thing, which is software development lifecycle models, okay? Always remember, don't get confused. So software development lifecycle, these are the phases, okay? These are all the phases. Requirements phase, design phase, coding phase, testing phase, deployment phase, maintenance. We have software development lifecycle models. These are all the phases and these are models, okay? So some of the examples or some of the models which the companies use are waterfall model, V model, agile model with scrum methodology. Okay, today I'm gonna to explain you waterfall model. Okay, what really happens in waterfall model? And there are some examples of companies, even now they use the waterfall model. Okay, I'll explain you what is waterfall model first, okay? So waterfall model is a sequential approach. Okay, so always remember what happens is the water from top 
will flow to the bottom okay so that is why waterfall models okay the water will slowly fall from top to the bottom okay and this is a sequential approach or a linear approach so sequential is first requirements gathering and then design and then coding and then testing and then implementation maintenance and implement deployment and then maintenance so this is a popular a popular uh, model which is mainly used in product development okay so what is product development again so what are products in the previous class i told you a product is for example microsoft microsoft has a product which is called office office has word microsoft word powerpoint which is this which is this powerpoint which i'm using it excel okay and see if i can office yeah so if you see word excel powerpoint these are all products okay so in product development they use this methodology waterfall model or it depends on company to company whether they want to use waterfall model or v model or agile model currently currently most of the companies are using agile model okay most of the companies even for product development and even for project development okay so what is waterfall model there are some companies still use waterfall model and they rely on waterfall model okay so i'll explain you the sequential approach of waterfall model how it happens in organizations okay so this is requirements okay then this is design so now you know each and every phase i've explained you okay so next is code testing deployment and then the last is support or maintenance okay so as you know that in requirements phase yeah so the waterfall model in waterfall model so in waterfall model in companies in xyz company they are developing a product they're developing a product so this is the product okay so they are developing a product okay in waterfall model when the first phase is happening there won't happen any other phases they won't do any parallel parallelly things won't happen here okay so the first phase is requirements phase yeah 
in requirements phase, when requirements phase is happening, the design, coding, and no other parallel work will happen in waterfall model. Okay. Just a moment. Yeah. So in waterfall model, as we said that requirements. So you know that I've explained you in the SDLC phases, which is software development life cycle phases. I've explained you what really happens in requirements phase. The business analyst will gather all the requirements. So in this phase, mainly the documentation is happening. The documentation for what? For the product. So which product we are trying to develop, that particular documentation process is happening. Okay. And the BA is responsible for that. Okay. So in certain companies, in certain companies, when the requirement phase is happening, they won't recruit testers at that particular time in waterfall model. So it depends on companies to companies, okay? So certain companies are there. Once when the requirement phase is finished, then they will recruit testers, okay? But there are other companies, they will involve testers from the phase one itself. The reason is why they will involve the testers in the phase one, which is requirement phases, once when the requirements phase, once when the requirements documents are being created. So for example, if the business analyst is creating uh, the, the document. So for example, this is BRS document. So BRS document. This is V.1, version one, which means version one. So version one is completed. And this particular document will be forwarded to the development team and the testing team. And the testing team is also involved because what happens is as a testing team, as a tester, you will be allowed to read the document and analyze and give any suggestions or find defects. Yeah. At this stage, we won't call them as bugs. Okay. We call them as defects. So if there, if there is any deviation or when you try to understand the system as a user, so you're trying to understand the BRS document. And if there is anything which you find like, okay, this won't fit into this, you can raise a defect and clarify with the business analyst. So what happens is once when the business analyst will clarify these things, he will go to the customer and ask like, these are the things which we found, do you want us to change any things? Okay, so then what happens is you'll have uh, another document, which is the same document, sorry, with, a version BRS version two. So in version one, we found certain defects and that, and those defects have been fixed. Okay. And those, those have been fixed. And then this is the final document. Okay. This is a final document. And after this, what happens is these documents are forwarded to the design team. Okay. So design team, based on the BRS and based on the communications the business analyst has done with the stakeholders, customers, the users. So the, so the BA will be talking to the people who are involved in the organization, which the organization which we are trying to build a website or a product. So all those communications will be forwarded to the design team. And the design team then will design the wireframes as i've already shown you wireframes okay so what happens here is when he creates all the wireframes now it is a combination of two now what is this so it is a combination of brs and again you have lld and hld which is low level design and high level design documents so let's say this is v1 okay so the testers, for example, they are recruited early from the requirements phase. Again, the low level design and the high level design documents will be forwarded to the testing team and the team who are involved 
to find some defects to 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 raise some defects to understand mainly to understand mainly to understand and uh, so what happens is in this process as testers in requirements phase in design phase the testers and the developers are getting knowledge knowledge of what knowledge of the product being developed so basically in this process you are trying to understand what is being developed so you're getting knowledge from the brs document from the high level document from from the low level document so you are so you are understanding the architectural flow diagrams you are understanding the the wireframes you are understanding the design documents so in this process you are getting you are getting knowledge okay and then in this phase after this two phases the brs document and the and the design documents are forwarded to the coding team So BRS, and the next is uh, design document, which is LLD and HLD. Okay, these two documents. Okay, and then SRS, SRS, and also and also some technical documentation. Technical documentation. So technical documentation sometimes uh, I mean testers are not involved in technical documentation. Okay, so what happens is in coding phase in real time in companies what happens is the development team based on the BRS document design document they create the software requirement specification document. So what is software requirement specification document? Software so, so software specification document is the technical document, okay? Software requirement document, sorry, it's not a technical requirement document, so, so, software requirement document is, is a software. So what softwares are involved? So, 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 so the developer based on his knowledge, yeah? So he will write this SRS document. So he will say that we require Visual Studio licenses. So what is Visual Studio license? I'll give you an example. Are you able to see my screen? Yeah. So Visual Studio, so if you see Visual Studio, yeah, this is Visual Studio. It is a development environment, okay? It is an integrated development environment. This is where this is where the developers will write their code, okay? This is where the developer will write the code. And in the SRS document, he will say that, sir, uh, for example, he will say that we need four licenses. Four licenses of what? Four license of Visual Studio. And two license of uh, Visio. So what is Visio again? What is Visio? So Visio, Microsoft Visio. Visio is a di diagram, Microsoft Visio. So Visio is this, so this kind of a software, which based on this, they can draw technical diagrams, okay? So, and the architect, architect is also involved. The architect. Who is an architect again? So our architect is a person who has the high level knowledge of the data flow. And he has the knowledge of systems. So architect, so a technical architect will also be involved in the SRS, creation of the SRS document. So what is the responsibility of an architect? The architect will draw the architectural flow diagrams. I'll show you one example. Yeah. 
if you see this is one example okay this is an architecture flow diagram these diagrams these diagrams because the architect the architect will have knowledge of the systems so he is responsible to draw he knows which systems are involved he knows the data from a point a to point b how the data flow is happening and as a tester as a tester as a tester it is very important to understand the architecture flow diagrams it is very important because as a tester you will know from point a to point b which are the systems the data is flowing through and which system is talking to which system so these are all the things you will understand in srs document okay now so what happens is all these documents the brs design documents the srs documents will be forwarded to the tester now as a tester was already involved so the tester has the knowledge of brs the tester has knowledge of srs now since yes the srs document has been forwarded the the tester has knowledge of design documents he has already raised certain defects on brs and design and he understands the srs so in this phase so what happens is as soon as the tester gets these documents this is an again an opportunity for the tester to understand and clarify any doubts okay this is very important guys this is very important at this stage you have to it is your responsibility to understand the brs srs and the design documents and if you have any clarifications i mean clarifications and also doubts okay if you do not understand any flow diagrams if you do not understand which system is talking to which system you'll have difficulty in creating test cases you'll have difficulty in creating test plans so it is very important so it is very important as you know that you were already involved in the first phase requirements phase you're already involved in design phase you're already involved in coding phase so what happens is at this stage so at this stage again requirements phase is finished design phase is finished okay coding phase in waterfall model since we follow the sequential model the coding is also finished okay so the coding is also finished so here when the coding is finished you need to understand these documents you need to write your test cases okay you need to write your write your test cases and you need to for example you need to ask for test environment okay so in initial stages as a tester the test manager or test lead will communicate with all the people and will get the test environment for you guys so test environment okay so in this phase in this phase what happens is as a tester you will write your test plans you will write your test scenarios you will write your test cases you will collect test data and based on this you are ready to test the product okay you are ready to test the product at this time any questions any questions in testing phase please in waterfall model imagine that you are already working in a company so based on that think think and ask me questions okay if not if not i'll move on to the next one so here in testing phase in waterfall model 
once when you finish the testing phase, we will move on to the next phase, which is deployment, this phase. Cool. So this is the process, if you understand here in waterfall model, it is sequential. So one phase after one phase after one phase, we are slowly moving to the deployment phase now. So as I already explained to you, in deployment phase, what really happens? Yes, in deployment phase, what happens is the tested code and the testing which has been done successfully, that will be deployed into a live environment. And again, deployment, we have some deployment tools. I'll just type in some deployment tools. What are the software deployment tools? One example is Jenkins is a deployment tool. Okay. So using Jenkins, they deploy the code from testing to live environment. Okay. Whichever environment, maybe UAT and after that live environment. Okay. So after the deployment phase, we have the next phase, which is maintenance support. So here, the code is live. Okay. The code is live. Live. Okay. So, as I explained to you the waterfall model now, so the main advantages, the main advantages of waterfall model. So waterfall advantages, there are some advantages of waterfall model, okay? So waterfall model, what happens is in waterfall model, there is an established timeline so we can define so on day one there is requirements gathering on day 45 testing will happen on day 15 design will happen on day 25 coding will happen so there is a proper planning can be done using waterfall model okay and advantages, clearly, clearly we can define the milestones and deadlines in waterfall model. So those are the advantages, okay? So uh, the some more advantages are understanding of the project is very good in waterfall and arranging tasks can be done better in waterfall. Okay. So what are the disadvantages? So there are some disadvantages. Okay. If there is any issue which is found, it's very hard in waterfall model to fix. Is that true? No. There is a chance to fix issues, but the main disadvantages is change requests. Or if you want to implement something new, it is very hard in waterfall model. So everything, everything, everything has to be done in requirements phase. So what happens in requirements phase? So in requirements phase, the team, the management team, the responsible, the team which is responsible, the management team, the business analyst and the product owner, they agree on these requirements and sign off is done. So once when the sign off of these requirements is done, it's very hard to make changes. So basically we, we in waterfall model, we can't, we can't make changes. So sign off is done. So once when the sign off is done, so you can't change the requirements. That's how the waterfall model works. So for complex, so for developing products, it is 
it is it is a good approach for but complex projects complex projects it is very hard to use waterfall model okay so now overall overall any questions on waterfall model before moving to b v model yes i have uh, yes like when we uh design is completed and coding part is completed yeah. when it goes to the testing team uh, yeah. what uh, they will do designing team and coding team on so scale? in waterfall yeah so that's a good question so in certain companies they might not be having any work or they might be working on another project okay okay but coding team won't work, be working on another project because what happens is they have to set up the test environment and while raising defects yeah the code the developer has to be available so when you raise defects yeah the coder will immediately fix and if you have any functionalities which you are not understanding you need to take uh, his help to understand the functionality and uh, for example uh, if you are not able to access or if you are not able to uh, set up some softwares the, the the developer will help you out in setting up the softwares okay okay yeah yeah any other questions from any others and also when it is on a like it is in a live yeah uh, after one year or two years um the coding team is in another project or like that so how can they fix it okay so in waterfall what happens is the the coding team is in different teams so yeah so it, they will raise an issue they were an issue so what happens is it's a tough question but what happens is if the coding team is not available yeah yeah so what happens is it they might uh, recruit new people okay and then they have to understand all the requirements documents and okay. then when the issue is raised that live ticket issue will be forwarded to those uh, developers okay okay so uh, we need to resolve uh, as soon as possible right uh, for recruiting and everything is not a simple task yeah exactly so what happens is usually the product which uh, since waterfall model the product which we are trying to develop yeah so there might be some core people still will be available to fix those issues as you said if there is no one available then this is the only process they ha they have to follow as you said if there is no developer present the people who develop the product no one is present they have to go through the requirements again and if there is an immediate issue then it's a tough task for them to fix it so what they will do is in usually product uh, product stuff here yeah? so they will release one more product same product with product version number being changed to version 2 and they use this concept as patch they will patch so if it's a if it's a very uh, important issue which needs to be fixed someone will be bought in immediately and he will go through all this stuff and he will fix that issue as a patch to the previous product and release that product as version v2 okay okay yeah, yeah. shall we move on to the next one v so we will move on to the next one which is v model so what is v model again in sdlc models this is an another model which is v model okay so always remember software development life cycle is a life cycle in which we have six phases and software development models models we have various models okay one model is waterfall one is v model and one is agile and you got some more models okay but we will only go through waterfall v and agile scrum okay so what is v model as the definition says the v model is a type of sdlc model well process executes in sequential manner in v 
This is also a sequential manner, but it happens in V. Okay. It is based on the association of testing phase for each correspondence development stage. Development of each step is directly associated with testing phase. Okay. So in waterfall model, when you compare to waterfall model, the requirements documents. So as I said, that the requirements documents, the BRS documents will only be tested when the testing team is recruited and when the testing phase is done. So at that particular time, so there is no change, much change happening, okay? So at that point of time, the tester is responsible to check all the details, okay? Here in V model, in requirements phase, you know that in requirements phase, what we have is BRS and SRS document. So as soon as those documents are created, as soon as the BRS document is created, acceptance testing is done by the tester immediately without any wasting of time. Immediately what happens is you will test it. You will test the requirements and then and there those things are fixed, okay? Moving on to the next phase is system design phase. So what happens is at this stage, the tester is involved to test the te system design, which is done parallelly, okay? Again, in architectural design flow diagrams, at this time, again, these documents are forwarded to the tester, testing is done. Okay, but not complete testing. You'll understand V model very slowly, but not complete testing. Okay, so what happens is next, module design. So the coding, the coding, the coding, what happens is they develop in modules. So module one, module two, module three. Okay, so when this modules of code are being developed, parallelly, the unit testing is happening by the testers, okay? Requirement, phase, okay. Acceptance of the requirements is being done. Yeah. And then similarly, we got next phase is design. Design testing is done. Only for the design at this point of time, only for the design. Design testing. Okay. So architectural design. So done with it. So module design. I'll explain you one module example. Okay. So module, yeah, module design and unit testing. So for example, this is a module, okay, desktop, yeah, module. So what happens is in this phase, unit testing will be happening parallelly, okay? So this is a module, this is a module. So this is, this is for the developers, they will set these as modules, okay? And this is as a frame, so this is as one frame, okay? 
So what happens in this is module testing will be happening. Okay. And then we will move on to the coding phase. So in this coding phase, if you see that unit testing for these modules has already been done. Yeah. So what happens is in coding phase, they will also do some more unit testing. So if you see, this is a V model. Okay. Certain things, certain things, which is the requirements documents has been parallelly tested. Okay. Certain things. If you see the arrow here, so you can understand, okay. Acceptance testing has been done. Okay. So from here, again, coding, from coding, unit testing of certain modules will be done. Okay. And in this phase, integration testing is a major phase for the developers. Okay. What is integration testing? So here, if you see, connecting all the modules as one unit. Okay. Connecting all these modules. So this is desktop. This is a module. Okay. Integrating these modules together and make it functional and work. Okay. So if you see all these modules here, this button here, okay. Continue button. Okay. All the footers. Yeah. So what happens is in this phase, when the integration testing will happen. Okay. So design document was tested. Yeah. Parallelly design documents and integration testing is done. Okay. Integration testing after integration testing, the system testing, this is where the testers are involved. So the tester has already tested the design documents parallelly. So he has the knowledge of uh, system testing design documents, system testing, system testing is this is where you would do all the complete testing. Okay. Complete system is tested the whole system, everything which in, in, involves everything. So which involves uh, shopping, which involves all the main functionalities, which involves the radio buttons. We call them this, this circle buttons as radio buttons. All the radio buttons are tested. Privacy policy. When I click on privacy policy, it, it has to land on the privacy page. All the functionalities have to be tested in the system testing phase. Okay. Acceptance testing. Again, UAT. UAT comes in picture here. Okay. So what is the main difference between V and waterfall? In V, you have an opportunity to check the requirements before the sign up and after the sign up. Sign off. Okay. Again, same with system design. You have an opportunity to test and raise defects at this point of time. So if you see the V model, it's V. So we go through this. Okay. One by one requirements analysis, system design, architecture design, module design, and then coding, and then unit testing, and then integration, and then system testing, and then acceptance testing. But also, if you see between this, this is an this this is an opportunity where you have tested the requirements and raised some defects. This is an opportunity where you have uh, tested the si system design in system testing. Architecture design, same, and module design. This is done by the developers. So what happens is when the module design, the unit testing, when they start unit testing in here, they already have completed certain unit testing here. So it is an easy, easy, easy for the developers to move on to the next stage, to the integration stage and the system stage and the acceptance. Okay. Any questions on B model? Yeah, so any example. So for example, so this is one of the model. And again, V models are used in certain product developments. So you're developing a product, same.
V2. So for example, in V model, if you are developing a product, so when compared to waterfall model, what happens is in waterfall model, the requirements, once the requirements are gathered, immediate sign off will happen. So you can't make much changes because once when the sign off is happening, happens, you need to move on to the next phase. But here, here in V model, what happens is when the requirements are gathered, parallelly, these requirements are being tested. Tested for what? The requirements are analyzed by the tester and the other team who are involved. So at this stage, there is a chance for you to make changes. But in waterfall, there is no chance. Okay. And then once when we move on to the next phase, which is system phase, you have a chance. The, set, the tester has a chance. But in waterfall model, all these requirements analysis phase and then next phase is the uh, design phase. You won't be having a chance to correct them because the testers or testing will be done at the fourth phase, which is the testing phase. But in, in, in V model, we have a chance, at least we have a chance to check these documents. Yeah, hope that is clear. Chandra? Yes. Or anybody? But uh, when we are designing uh, designing the system or mm. anything, how can the test uh, testing team, there is no code, right? There is no pro, uh, development. Yeah. That, how can they So, test? yeah. So, Chandra, what happens is when you're testing and when you're raising a defect, when you're in, in test environment, when you're raising if you find anything, any issue, you raise it as a bug. But in design phase, in design phase, this is an opportunity for the tester to actually see the wireframes. So for example, Okay. So in V model, as I told you, you have the requirements document, you will compare the requirements document. And in the designs, you will see that if there are any spelling mistakes. So these kind of defects, any spelling mistakes, and uh, the resolution, the height. And uh, if you see this wireframe here, so for example, this is mobile, but you will also have in design, so the designers will develop the website design, right? At that stage also, you will have an opportunity to see the wireframes, not the website, not the website, because the website is not developed yet. So you will have, you have a communication channel between design team and you to understand, okay, so the website size is this, and the website can work on a mobile phone, on also a tablet, and also on the desktop. So these are the things uh, using the wireframes you can understand and raise defects. So for example, the designer. So for example, if you see uh, that the designer is putting the product blocks here, okay? If you see the product blocks here. So sometimes what happens is when you open the wireframe link, so they will give you a link. And if you open that wireframe link in a mobile phone, so what happens is sometimes the design might overlap. These two, these two products might overlap. So those things, okay? Those uh, issues can be. Uh, yeah, edited version, right? But uh, uh, UI team will take care of all those things, that, uh, like dimensions when it opens. Yes, yes. UI okay. team will take, but you 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 have a you have an opportunity here to test them. Okay. So once the UI team finalizes the wireframes, they will send you the link. Okay. But they, they won't much test it. Yeah. 
so they don't test it so they will create the wireframes they'll say that this is this this wireframes and then when you have that url you have a chance to actually see the see see them in the in the uh, in the so if you open the url and if you see that okay certain areas and you can also give suggestions and clarifications okay so those changes can be made in system design okay Okay, any more questions, guys? If no questions, we will conclude the V model and I will explain you V model next week. Some more points I need to explain the advantages and disadvantages and uh, the examples of companies or, pro or projects which use V models. And then we will move on to the agile model okay i will also show you the yeah if you go through the course content so next next week i will explain you how the requirements the testing process and the implementation and test planning can be done requirements gathering how requirements gathering is done the responsibility of ba srs document understanding requirements understanding for srs clarifications and also next week i'll explain you the testing methodologies so this is very important so we got the sdlc models here and we got testing methodologies we got black box white box and gray box with examples okay we will elaborate on black box testing okay so next week we will we will do this and uh, if you can let me know if any questions please ask questions now if not we will conclude and we'll rejoin next week yeah okay then thank you thank you very much for today and uh, meet you next week, same time. Yeah, I have. Uh, do you have any recordings uh, yesterday's one? Yeah, yesterday's one, there is a recording. And I think you need to ask the support team. Okay. Yeah, being the support team, you will have the recordings by yesterday's team, yeah, yesterday's video. Okay. Okay. Yeah, thank you guys. Thank you very much. Thank you, sir. Thank you.